Hello, everyone. And uh, yes, today in this week, we keep on talking about how to develop uh, adaptive cards uh, uh, for Microsoft Viva Connections. And specifically today, I want to explain you how you can leverage the data binding capabilities that we have uh, in adaptive card extension. So a uh, few words uh, uh, on this slide, and then uh, uh, we will move to the actual demo. Uh, so whenever we work with adaptive card extensions, uh, uh, we can store content inside the properties or the state uh, of the adaptive uh, card extension. And once we do that, uh, we can then easily do data binding either in the card views, but as you know, based on the previous episode we saw, in a card view, you have a limited set of information that you can show due to the design and the form factor of those card views, which are just three options available. But when we talk and we think about quick views, in there, we can do a lot of stuff. We can uh, um, format content and data uh, with a lot of options based on the schema of the uh, adaptive card syntax. So for example, we can create lists, uh, tables, we can create uh, interactive forms, as you saw in the previous demo from Derek. You can do conditional formatting, uh, or you can, uh, for example, change colors, visibility, and stuff like that about the fields and properties that you show. You can play with headers and details, and you can show and hide content, and you can even do JSON parsing. So what I'm going to do right now is to share with you uh, some of the options that we have uh, from a practical point of view so that you can learn how you can do that in your own uh, adaptive card extensions. As such, let me move to the demo and let me show you uh, something which I think is quite cool. So let me move to this example. And here we have an adaptive card extension built with SPFX, which is defined with a orders property of type array of order, just for the sake of having some kind of data for data binding purposes in this state of the adaptive card extension, as well as eventually some other properties in the properties interface of the adaptive card. Now, Every single order is made of these uh, properties. So uh, the ID, the date, the status of the order, and the status can be any of these values, the uh, reference customer, and the total amount of the order. And just for the sake of creating uh, a, a, an explanatory demo, so a simple one, I decided in the on init method of these uh, adaptive card extensions to preload a set of orders because I don't really care about how we will retrieve data for data binding right now. Eventually, one of the upcoming episodes, we will see how we can consume a graph or SharePoint REST or any other API. But right now, I just want to focus on how we can do data binding. And so here I have a list of fake orders that I'm just loading in memory in order to do data binding. So once I've done that, I have, and let me show you, I have, for example, here in the workbench, my adaptive card extension running, and we can see a, a quick view with a recap of the orders, as well as we can see a quick view with the list of orders. So let me dig into those quick views a little bit more. The first one is just a quick view in which we provide through the uh, data interface of the quick view, a set of content like the orders count and the orders total amount, which are simply uh, based on the orders array that we have in the state of the adaptive card extension. And we can easily, inside the uh, adaptive card JSON syntax, we can easily rely on those properties. So for example, in order to do data binding, we simply need to do dollar uh, and we uh, open a curly bracket and we provide the name of the property that we want to query from the data context of the adaptive card that we are rendering. And as you can see here, we can also play with some uh, functions like, for example, the format number, which can be used to do proper formatting of numbers or currencies inside the uh, output of the adaptive card. But what is more interesting is that in the second quick view that I'm going to show you, we can provide the whole array of orders as the data source for our quick view rendering. And as such, by providing this orders property, which is an array of order objects uh, in the uh, adaptive card definition, we can play with the dollar 
data property inside the definition of our adaptive card. So let me try to explain you what we have right here. First of all, we start providing uh, the title like we uh, are used to doing uh, in most of the uh, adaptive cards. And then we provide uh, the subtitle, if any, of the adaptive card. Once you have done that, and if you look at the output, you can recognize these items. Then we have a grid, a list, uh, with all of the headers and the values. Well, here we have a container where we render all of the headers, so the date, uh, the customer, and so on and so forth. And let me collapse this one. And then we have the whole list of orders rendered with a set of multiple lines, one for each order. And here we simply say, OK, let's get all of the items that we will render based on the array of orders that we have uh, through the uh, data interface that we are binding to the adaptive card. And under the cover, the rendering engine will simply render the same outline for every single order in the array of orders. And as such, then we render, for example, one column with the format date time. So yet another function that you can use when you do data binding in adaptive cards with the format date time of the date property of the current order, providing the format string for the date, which is quite cool. We can also render the customer. This is just a string value, so I just output the same value. We can work with the uh, amount of the order, and again, we can rely on the format number. But we can also play, for example, with a function like the if one, where we can evaluate the status of the order, of the current order item. And we can say, OK, if the status is 0, it will be inserted, the value of the uh, status of the order. If it is 1, it will be processed, and so on, so forth. And that's how we render this column with the status of every single order item. OK, now we can even do more. For example, we can play with the uh, color that we use to render the status. So we can add an additional property to the text block uh, rendering the status of the order. And the property could be the color one. From an adaptive card syntax point of view, the color can assume uh, uh, some predefined values like warning or accent or good, which will define the actual color for rendering the text. So for example, here again, we can play with data binding, so dollar curly brackets, and then we evaluate the status, and we can render the insert with the default value, with the default color, sorry, or we can render the processed with a warning, which will be a kind of an orange color. We can use the accent for the uh, delivered and the green, which is good as the color name in adaptive cards for the uh, completed uh, order. So let me save the updated uh, JSON for my adaptive card and let me refresh the rendering of my card right here. So back to the preview mode, order lists. I don't know if you can see it through the screen sharing, but now we have uh, the green color for the completed, uh, and we have the different colors in place based on the status of the order. And that's uh, an interesting information for you because you can assume that almost any single or every single property that you have in the adaptive card schema definition can get a value which can be calculated or based on a, a data bound value that you have in your data source for data binding. So you are not only limited to using the text value of a field, but you can play with color, we can play with size and stuff like that. Another interesting property that, can, that you can use when you work with data binding in adaptive card extensions is the uh, dollar index keyword, which will provide you the index of the item that you are rendering right now whenever you render an array of items. So just for the sake of making an example, we can say something like, OK, render the dollar index of the current item followed by the date and time. So let me save it one more time and let me refresh the page to show you the output. So back to preview mode and here we can see the index 0, 1, 2, so it is zero based, but we can see the index of the line that we are rendering, which is again cool whenever you need to define, dynamically define a set of fields, for example, in the uh, quick view that you are rendering, because just to make uh, or just to give you an idea, you want to process the callback uh, when the user will click a button to post uh, eventually the content uh, of the UI back to you and you can uh, intercept 
through the uh, index uh, which item has which value in the UI. So this is really cool, as well as you can, for example, provide uh, row counting capabilities or stuff like that. Let's keep on talking about what we can do. There is another interesting property that we can play uh, with, uh, which is the dollar root. In fact, uh, we have dollar index to refer to the uh, current index of the current item. But what if right now here we are rendering uh, every single order item in the array of orders, and we want, for example, to refer to a property which is not related to the current order, but it is related to the uh, to the whole uh, data source of the data binding. Just as a reminder, our data source is made of a subtitle, of a title, of the array of orders, and of the status filter. So if we want to access, for example, the status filter, which is a property defined at the root level of the data source and not inside every single order, we can use the following syntax. If my Visual Studio code will follow me. Okay. So we can say dollar root inside a data binding clause dot, and we can play with the property, like for example, status filter that we want to use inside our uh, adaptive car definition. So let me try to show you a useful and real example of this uh, uh, capability. And let's play with uh, the uh, visibility of the rows uh, in my output. So let's assume that we want to uh, use the is visible property that we have in the adaptive card syntax, which can assume a Boolean value. Of course, if I will say is visible false for every single row, and I will save, if I go back to my adaptive card in action, preview, and I click on the order list, of course, I will not have any line of orders because we don't have any of them visible based on the instruction that I gave to the adaptive card definition. But what if we want to uh, create something smart like having in the adaptive card definition a property called status filter of type number, and in the property pane, we define a set of values which will allow us to configure the adaptive card so that we can say, okay, Let's do that. Let's show just the delivered orders in this card or just the completed orders. Why not? OK, if we do that, we can also say in the JSON that instead of is visible equal an explicit value, we can actually define a rule based on data binding. So here we can say is visible will be equal to if status is equal to dollar root status filter or status filter is minus one meaning show me everything then i will provide true as the value for is visible otherwise i will provide false so let me save this one one more time and let me go back to the rendering refresh preview and here we are now we simply have the completed orders this is yet uh, a really cool feature, in my opinion, that you can leverage. And to be completely fair with you, if you just want to play with the visibility of an item, you can even leverage an out-of-the-box capability that we have instead of the is visible, which is an example that I showed you just to give the idea that you can dynamically change the value of any of the properties of the uh, adaptive card JSON definition, including uh, uh, some kind of complex logic based on properties that you have in the root object of the data binding. But we can even do more. In the adaptive card JSON syntax, we have the dollar when property, which is defined just for the sake of making it possible for us to show or to not show an item based on a condition. So when we use the dollar when, like when we use the dollar data, we provide the data source for data binding. When we use dollar when, this means it will be visible when the condition provided as the value will be true. So I can say if, referring to the data binding, the status of the order, the current order is equal to the status filter, or again, the status filter is not defined, let's show the item. If not, let's hide the item. So I will save it one more time, and I will go back to show you the output, which will be exactly the same as before, but, we, but with a more uh, uh, correct syntax, let me say, because if you want to play with visibility, dollar when should be the right option for you.
Now, we can uh, do more. For example, when we build the UI of an adaptive card, and I will show you uh, in another example that I already shared with you in a previous call, the uh, Contoso orders adaptive card uh, sample. Here we have the Contoso manage orders adaptive card. In this one, we can play with this uh, uh, functionality. We can click on the Chevron button and we can expand or collapse a single uh, order item um, here and show you this one. This should be the right one, exactly. Here we can rely on a, a really interesting option that we have in the adaptive card syntax, which is the um, action.toggle visibility. With this one, we can say that whenever the user will click on this item, we will target the visibility of one or more items. And as you can see here, we are using uh, both the uh, binding capability with the dollar and the dollar index to identify a specific item in the list of orders that we have in the UI. So I'm basically saying when the user will click on this toggle visibility item, let's target the visibility of the items with the index of the currently clicked item. So that's why when I click on the Chevron button, I can expand or collapse this specific item I'm clicking on. And in the definition of my adaptive card, I can say, okay, for example, the Chevron down and the Chevron up buttons IDs will be based on data binding using the dollar index of the current item. So here I'm referring to this item and this item and I will play with their visibility as well as with the visibility of the order content container, which will render the actual form to edit uh, the order. So again, I think this is really, really cool and powerful. Last sample that I want to show you, still just relying on the syntax, out of the box syntax of the adaptive card uh, uh, JSON definition, we can also parse and manage JSON content, so for example, dynamic JSON content inside the uh, rendering of uh, an adaptive card. So let me switch to a different sample. And first of all, I need to stop this one. Let me switch to the other one that I have right here. And let me start this one while we talk about it. Gulp serve, no browser. Oops, no browser, okay. This is just a really simple adaptive card extension in which I rely on the uh, graph, Microsoft graph, to get the me object, so the definition of myself, basically from a graph point of view. So here, whenever we call the, or we invoke the slash me and point under graph, we get back a JSON representation of the uh, current user. That's me right now. So here I simply get the me result, selecting these properties from the me object, and I store, for the sake of making an example, a JSON string with the user content inside the state of my adaptive card extension. So right here in the state, I define the string. Cool. Now, when I get the JSON stringify of the user inside this string, I can then use it as the content uh, of the data source of my uh, quick view so that in the rendering of my quick view in the JSON, I can say that I want to do dollar JSON, which is a function provided by the adaptive card syntax. I provide the JSON string and this function will do the parsing of the JSON and then I can access any of the properties of the JSON object that I'm providing, which is Again, I think really, really powerful. Let me show you the output and then it will be back to you, Julie. So let me edit this page. Let me remove this card and refresh. I will add my new read user data preview. And as you can see here in the quick view, I can see data coming out from my JSON object. So just for your reference, uh, few links so the adaptive card.io site to get the whole syntax of that card this second link is with the definition of all of the function that i used functions and keywords that i used in data, in data binding and the last link is the one where you can find all of the samples that i'm sharing with you uh, through these uh, aces uh, uh, short uh, demos and that's all for me back to you julian thank you awesome thank you paulo that was just 
some great stuff. I'm sure everybody got a lot out of that. Thank you.